Hi everybody, this video is going to focus on Matthew Bourne's influences. Let's start with two questions, so I'd just like you to make a note. What are Matthew Bourne's influences? Do you have any idea? Write these down. Once you've done that, I want you to think about, can you give any examples of where these influences are seen within his works? The more detail you can give, the better. Okay, so in front of you here is almost like a mood board of all of Matthew Bourne's influences. Okay, so I would like you to pause the video and see if you've got any of these in the previous task where you had to think about what these influences could be. If you didn't, who do you think these people are and what do you think these influences could be? Okay. Let's have a look at the first thread. So Bourne always quotes that he is really, really influenced by two threads. So here we've got Fred Astaire and we've also got another Fred that I'm going to talk about a bit later. But do you know who that is? So Fred Astaire is an, was sorry an American dancer, singer, actor, choreographer, musician and television presenter. His style, he had a fluid style that combined tap, ballroom and ballet which was very relaxed light effortless and largely improvised he performed ordinary action and movement which then flowered into a dance and his movement was highly complex and the way he used music was highly complex and you needed to repeat and watch it a few times to see the completeness to things that you thought were unconnected before and this is what Bourne was really um, influenced by so what was his relationship to Bourne? Well, as a child, Bourne saw him on television and was absolutely captivated by the style, the way he moved and his stage presence. And when Bourne went off to Laban and when he was in his third year, he actually formally studied Astaire as part of a project that he was um, doing theoretically. Professional works that um, Fred Astaire danced in include Top Hat and Daddy Long Legs, 1935, 1955, but there are so many. So I urge you now to have a look at some Fred Astaire works, have a look at the way that he moves, make some notes about his style so that then you can do the following. I want you to find at least two specific and detailed examples of where the Fred Astaire influence is seen within Matthew Bourne's works using subject specific vocabulary. OK, so this is wording that I've taken from the specification and taken from the mark scheme. We're looking for specific and detailed and using subject specific terminology. OK, so can you pause the video and have a look at that now? MGM musicals are a massive influence on Bourne. So the idea of large, colourful sets, costume and lighting, the use of facial expressions to tell stories, um, this Hollywood glamour are all things that Bourne just loves and was always really inspired by from um a young age. Some musicals include Singing in the Rain, The Bandwagon, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, Kiss Me Kate, The Wizard of Oz. So these are all MGM musicals. Now I'd like you to have a think and have a look through Bourne's works. Can you find at least two specific and detailed examples of where the MGM influence is seen within Matthew Bourne's works using subject specific vocabulary? So a key one, a little hint for you, is looking at Clara within the Nutcracker and this link to The Wizard of Oz. That's a really key one that you can look at. But otherwise, look at um, the set that Matthew Bourne uses in his works because that lavish and really colourful set design can definitely be traced back to um, this Hollywood glamour. Buzzy Berkeley was an American film director and choreographer. His style was um, 
he devised elaborate musical production numbers that often involved complex geometric patterns, which you can see from the images. And he used large numbers of showgirls and props as fantasy elements in kaleidoscope on-screen performances. So Matthew Bourne um, was really into, like we said before, studying dance history and looking into what amazing choreographers of the past had done so in his third year he actually used music and choreographic ideas of Berkeley I was always really inspired by him a bit of context for you so professional works that Berkeley um stage dances for that one of the highlights of his career was sort of in 1933 and he choreographed for 42nd Street Gold Diggers and Footlight Parade all in 1933. So now I would like you to think of, and I'm just going to ask for one here, one specific and detailed example of where the Busby Berkeley influence is seen within a Matthew Bourne work using subject specific vocabulary. I think I know what everyone is going to go for because we have spoken about this quite a lot in lessons, but I would like you to really make sure that you're describing this moment or this set really, really specifically. Alfred Hitchcock was an English film producer and director, and he had a massive influence on Matthew Bourne. You can see so many references of Hitchcock's films within Bourne's works. So Hitchcock's style, uh, Bourne describes it as a complete piece of entertainment. It's exciting, it's funny, there are star performances, it has a good story and it's very cinematic. He has strong set pieces of imagery throughout the films that you remember long afterwards. So after a moment of dialogue there might be just lots of real key visual images that are very striking. The use of extreme facial expression is used to show emotion in Hitchcock's films and he builds suspense within the films. So he's described as the master of suspense and each shot was carefully planned out and storyboarded. So Bourne grew up with a passion and interest for film and this storyboard idea really helped Bourne to think about developing the plot of his own dance pieces. And Bourne is so influenced by Hitchcock that in 1992, he actually created a piece of dance called Deadly Serious, which was all um, all about Hitchcock's films. It was non-narrative, but it took lots of different moments from his films. Examples of Hitchcock films um, are Notorious, 1946, Psycho, 1960, and The Birds, 1963. So... Um, check those films out if you haven't already because then you will really be able to see these influences when you look at Bourne. So what I'd like you to do now is to find at least two specific and detailed examples of where the Alfred Hitchcock influence is seen within Matthew Bourne's work using subject specific ter um, terminology of vocabulary. I'm actually going to help you out with this one because Matthew Bourne's book is brilliant so if you just have a listen to some of these examples and make a note of them and then do go away and find your own as well so let me so in swan lake um he says that the vicious and threatening behavior of the swans on the bed at the end of act two is influenced by alfred hitchcock's film the birds so in the film, the main actress is surrounded by several birds who swoop on her as she sits on a bench. Soon the sky is filled with birds and they begin to attack her. This imagery is reflected in the choreography of the scene in which the swans swarm the prince's bed. So you've got a real key moment there directly influenced by a scene in Hitchcock's film. And um, this it shows one of the key themes in Swan Lake, which is good versus evil. Another example 
um, that I've got from for you um, is actually from Cinderella. Now, it doesn't matter that you haven't watched Matthew Bourne's Cinderella because in this essay, well, in these essays, you can reference works. Um, you don't necessarily need to have seen them uh, because some of the older Rombe stuff, there's not actually access to it. So um, in Cinderella... He says that he uses um, the theory of duplication, which is what Hitchcock does in the film Notorious. So he says, in the underground station sequences in C Cinderella, most of those people are in twos. You've got two male prostitutes, two female prostitutes. They're doing unison work because what they're doing is not actually dance material. It's dance gesture and a certain amount of physical movement. If it was done individually, it would look less choreographed. So the duplication is to show that there is a choreographic form to it, and by showing that form, you are actually drawing attention to the specifics of the movement more than if it was only one person who did it. So this theory of duplicating and repeating people, which he does in Notorious... And then the other example that Bourne discusses in his book is this idea of um, black and white, which you and uh, then turning into colour. So you see this in Nutcracker with the opening, uh, the first act being in black and white when they're in the orphanage, and then the second half is all bright and colourful. So um, this black and white could be um, based like based loosely on the black and white era of Hitchcock, um, and then the part two, Act Two, is influenced by um, Hitchcock's coloured movies. Okay, so you could make that reference as well. Let's have a look at the other Fred. So, Frederick Ashton, a British ballet choreographer. His ballets are known for combining crisp technique with the utmost elegance. And he was specific in the use of a poumon, which is the use of the shoulders and neck in ballet. And he often used quick footwork in his ballets. Though he choreographed a handful of plotless ballets, many of his works were narrative, telling stories through the movement rather than relying heavily on mime. And he developed individualised movement motifs, creating memorable characters, which Bourne was really drawn to. And he used um, the frequent themes of love, friendship, humour and loyalty within his ballets. So Bourne was really drawn to um, Ashton at the age of 20 when he first saw a piece, um, when he first saw basically Ashton's choreography and it was close to the musical he had loved because it had comedy, romance, surprise, a bit of everything he says. So the, fir the first work that he actually saw was called La Fille Ma, La Fille Ma, Garde, again, sorry about my French there, um, if that's wrong, um, but hopefully I pronounced that kind of right. Um, that was 1960 and he also created Cinderella in 1939. So I'd like you to find at least two specific and detailed examples of where the Frederick Ashton influence is seen within Matthew Bourne's works using subject-specific vocabulary. You want to be finding balletic examples here where you see the use of the shoulders and the neck um, in this very elegant way and where you see quick footwork used within ballet phrases of Bourne's works. Adding to Bourne's eclectic dance style, we now have Isadora Duncan, who is a modern dance pioneer who Bourne says was very, very influential to him. So I do a whole video on modern dance history, so please do have a look at that if you haven't already. I'll go into much more detail about Isadora Duncan there. But her movement style was free with natural movements. It broke away from the conventions of classical ballet. It required athleticism, skipping, jumping, leaping, um, running, much more. Uh, her movement is joyous and she was actually inspired by classical Greek arts, folk dances and social dances. So that's a bit of context there on Isadora Duncan, which you could um, write about just to introduce her in um, a short, concise sentence. And 
Matthew Bourne um, found her style of free dance exciting and inspiring. Now, I've sort of gone on a bit of a journey here with his influences. So first we've started looking at musicals and film because this is what he was inspired by as a child. Then we're looking at ballet with Frederick Ashton of when he started to um, become interested in that. And now we're looking at Isadora Duncan because he obviously went off to university to study dance and he was introduced to this whole new world that was um, modern dance. So another style has been thrown into his eclectic mix. I would now like you to find at least two specific and detailed examples of where the Isadora Duncan influence or modern dance in general, because um, you can trace that back to Isadora Duncan. So you could speak about other contemporary dance features here um, are seen within Matthew Bourne's works using that subject specific vocab. Let's have a look at some further influences um, of Matthew Bourne's. So the first one that we're going to talk about is carry on films. OK, so this idea of slapstick comedy, humour and engaging the audience is something that Matthew Bourne um, really adds into his choreography. Um, a little example um, that I'm going to give you is in Nutcracker, Sweetie Land and by invitation only section. So um, there's a clear sexual innuendo and it's when Princess Sugar feeds Nutcracker a marshmallow taken from inside the top of her mouth. Prince Bonbon draws the king's attention to them. He mimes a fast opening and closing of his mouth comically in time with the musical pulse as if it's talking at great speed. The queen decides the issue of Nutcracker's suitability with one swift lick of her finger as does the king, although Prince Bonbon is not sure. While the parents move to one side and mime a private conversation, Prince Bonbon plays a trick on the nutcracker. So this carries sexual connotations and the innuendo is very clear. This type of risque humour is traditional to English pantomime or the British comedy films um, that we're talking about here as part of the Carry On film series. So that's a really clear example um, for you from The Nutcracker. Film noir um, is associated with low-key black and white um, visual style that has its roots in German expressionist cinematography. This is one of Bourne's um, influences it has a mood of fatalism, pessimism and menace and it influences Bourne's use of colour in the set as well as choices such as chiaroscuro lighting to set atmosphere and mood. So this type of lighting is associated with um, like the treatment of light and shade. So the contrast of light and shade used um, in drawings, paintings or obviously here on stage with the lighting. So what I'd like you to do is just have a look through um, some of Bourne's works and see if you can find an example of where this chiaroscuro lighting is used. Music always plays a major role in the works of Matthew Bourne. He's often heavily influenced by music and uses it as a stimulus, source of inspiration or even a choreographic tool when creating his productions. He uses original scores um, for a lot of his works and he adapts themes, adds sound effects and uses music in an, eye, in an ironic way to create humour as well. And Bourne is also influenced by current affairs. So in Swan Lake, he was influenced by the Charles and Camilla Royal Affair. And for Sleeping Beauty, the TV series um, True Blood, which was all about vampires, influenced the Gothic fairies. So you can see how he's influenced by um, media at the time. So have a think about other works of Bourne and think about are there any other current affairs that he um, is influenced by. So we've spoken about the non-negotiables before. I've listed seven here, but we have actually discussed more. So if you can remember all of these, then please do add the extras on. And it's about what you can bring to a discussion. So if you remember more about other key influences we've discussed, then by all means, um, you can talk about them. So we've got Fred Astaire, MGM Musicals, Alfred Hitchcock, Fred Astaire, 
Frederick Ashton, sorry, um, Isadora Duncan, Carry On Films and Music. I'd like to leave you with some questions to consider. Okay, so have the have a really good think about these and make some notes. So can you give detailed and specific examples of where born influences can be seen within his works? How has Matthew Bourne's upbringing, education, inspiration and influences had an effect on his repertoire? What similarities and differences does Bourne have to other practitioners within the independent contemporary dance scene in Britain in terms of influences? And how have these influences played a role in developing the independent contemporary dance scene in Britain?